Ladies and gentlemen, it's 2022. The digital age is heavily upon us, meaning that more and more data is getting created every single day, whether that's photos, videos, important documents, or the personal information from everybody on the planet. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a lot of digital assets that are irreplaceable, which is why I have a backup. But what happens if one of my YouTube videos is an absolute banger and burns the house down? That's why today we'll be setting up an offsite remote backup solution so that in the case of a disaster, I still have all of my digital assets backed up to a remote location. So that's what we're going to do today, utilizing TrueNAS Scale, TailScale, and RSync. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, let me preface this by saying this is not the only way to accomplish setting up a remote backup solution. There are plenty of other ways to do it. There are plenty of guides out there. This is just the way that I've chosen. Now, I've gone with TrueNest Scale. You don't have to go with that. The general idea for this is the same, whether or not you use TrueNest Scale or not. But if you're using TrueNest Scale like me, setup is relatively easy. Just follow the general setup guide, then go about setting up True Charts, which is like five or so steps. I'll link all the guides in the description below. I'll have my own written guide in the description below as well if you want to check that out. But we'll be using True Charts to set up a repository to allow us to download TailScale, which is the next important step. TailScale. What is it? It's essentially a self-hosted VPN service that allows you to connect computers to each other or networks to each other regardless from their physical location or where they're at in the world. I guess that is physical location, but TailScale is going to allow us to easily connect our server based on our home network to our remote server, which I will deploy at a friend's house. The first thing you'll do is go to the TailScale website and set up an account. Once you've done that, there's not really much you can do until you've set up the TailScale service on at least one machine. So that's what we're going to do. So assuming you've added the TrueCharts repository, you should see the TailScale application available to install. So Go ahead and do that and we'll walk through the few things you need to change to get set up and going. Obviously, we're going to give it a name and auth key is your API key that you will obtain from your TailScale administrator dashboard on their website. So go ahead and create one of those, copy it because you won't be able to receive it or see it again. So copy it, put it in a safe place if you want to use it later. You can always generate another one if you want, but yeah. Next is routes, which are extremely important because by default, the only two things that will be able to talk to each other are the services running TailScale. And in this instance, we have TailScale running in a Kubernetes cluster on TrueNAS, meaning that essentially the only thing that will be able to talk to it is the TailScale application itself. We don't want that. We also want to be able to communicate with our base TrueNAS system where all of our storage is. So. That's where routes come in handy. Routes essentially allow you to communicate with a device or an entire network outside of the TailScale application. So here you can see we are specifying 10.0.1.35 with the subnet of 32, meaning that we only want to expose this single IP. And that IP is the base IP address of our TrueNAS scale. Now we can access our TrueNAS scale application through tail scale from wherever, eventually we'll get there. But my use case may be different from yours. If you wanna specify an entire network, you can change this to whatever subnet you're using and expose your entire network if you want. But for my use case, I only care about exposing our TrueNAS instance. So that's what I did. Now, one thing to note is that after you specify a route and start the tail scale application, you're going to have to go into your administrator dashboard and make sure that routes are turned on for that specific machine. And you'll only have to do this once. I found that sometimes it will spin up a different machine ID and you may have to go in and do it again. But for the most part, go in there, go to edit routes and make sure that is turned on. And aside from that, the settings I pretty much left to default. I set my local time zone and then honestly, everything was left untouched. You can go through here and change whatever you need to, depending on your use case. But for me, everything else being left to default was perfectly fine. So once I did that, spun it up, tail scale is active, everything worked perfectly fine. So what's next? 
Well, honestly, at this point, you could go deploy your backup server to its remote location and ensure that it's running with the correct IP address and tail scales up and running and you're good to go. But it's probably best to do everything locally and make sure it all works before you drive however many miles away to deploy this thing. So what we're gonna do is install Tailscale on my MacBook, log into a different VLAN and make sure that I can communicate with my backup server. So obviously I've already done this for testing purposes. I have the Tailscale app installed on my MacBook. Go ahead and connect. Actually first, before I do that, let me connect to a different VLAN and show you guys that I can't actually get to my TrueNAS scale instance. And when I connect to Tailscale, I should be able to, which can confirm that it is working. Okay, we're on a different VLAN now. And if I try to ping my TrueNAS scale server, you can see we're timing out. We can't reach it. So let's go ahead and connect to Tailscale. We are connected. Now let's try to ping. And just like that, we are connected to our backup server over the Tailscale VPN. Now I know you're thinking, oh, you're in the same house on the same network, big deal. Well, we're on a different VLAN, so this is essentially simulating being on one network and deploying to a completely separate one, whether that's in a VLAN or completely remote. So yeah, we're good here. Now, just to show you, I can't access anything else on that subnet. Let's try to ping my main uh, Proxmox server. Nope, can't reach it. And that is because we specified the subnet of 32, which is only a single IP address. At this point, I think we're ready to bring the backup server to its final resting place. From there, we'll have to tweak a few things, mainly just the IP address, because it's probably not gonna be the same once we deploy it to somebody else's network, but we'll worry about that when we get there. And once that's done, we should be able to come back and set up all the rsync configuration that we need as well as tail scale on our main server. So, just keep going. Watch the video, right? Yeah. So, that means you gotta be silent if you're here or go play somewhere else. How YouTube videos are made. All right, we've traveled across the hottest deserts, the most treacherous mountains, the deepest oceans, and we're finally here at our remote site Okay, actually, we just traveled like right down the street. Uh, my friend lives in like the same neighborhood, but it's the same concept, okay? Hello. All right, so the machine is set up right here. Uh, you probably can't see it, but I'll put in some B-roll or something. But yeah, like I said before, when we deploy it at a remote site, the IP address is going to change. So right now you can see we're logged in through 192.168.86.45, which is clearly different than the one we had before. So I mentioned that we do have to go in and make some slight modifications. So what I did was go into the apps, go into your tail scale configuration, edit, and remember how we set the routes before with our IP address? Well, just change it there to the new IP address. Make sure that it's static so it never changes. Uh, you wouldn't want to deal with that. But once you do that and update it, tail scale doesn't care just restarts it with the new IP address for the new route but remember how in the Tailscale admin console we had to accept that route the first time well this is a new one so if we go in here you'll see that it is now grayed out meaning that it's asking for us to accept that again we'll go into edit route settings turn on the new one or remove the old one and turn on the new one that should be updated and to test this out, I will show you that we will connect to a hotspot. So we are using my iPhone as a hotspot, meaning that we are no longer connected locally to my TrueNAS server. And if I try to ping it, we can't reach it. So we'll now sign into Tailscale on my MacBook. We are logged in. And now if we are connected, I should be able to successfully ping the TrueNAS server. Now we've proved that our server has been deployed at a remote site. We can connect to it from essentially any network, meaning that we are free to go back home and set up the rsync uh, backup service. The last thing we want to do is actually confirm that we can sign in to our TrueNAS server because once we get back home, we want to at least access the TrueNAS GUI. So let's just double check that we can do that. We're in, still connected to my hotspot. Good to go. All right, we're back and we've confirmed that we can access our remote server 
through Tailscale. Now that the last step is to get our main server set up with Tailscale so that the two can talk to each other. And then we'll set up our sync to make sure all the data is transferred back and forth. We'll actually just forth. Now, if you're also running TrueNAS on your main server, then It'll essentially be the exact same steps and then go through and set up replication or rsync or whatever type of data migration you want. But in our case, we're actually running this on Proxmox. So what I've done is actually spun up a Docker instance. I'm running Portainer. And what we're going to do is install Tailscale using Docker Compose. So if we go into my Portainer instance, you'll see that I've created a custom template for Tailscale. Let's take a look at it. And it's actually a pretty simple Docker Compose setup. If we look here, you can see we've specified a name for it. We specified these volumes that are pretty much unchanged from the documentation. And then the only thing you'll really change in here are the routes and the auth key. So remember before we had to enter our authorization key as well as the routes. Well, that's no different in Docker Compose. So set that up, we've deployed it. It's running. Uh, one thing to make sure that you do is to not miss the network mode set to host. That'll make sure that we can actually access our local network so that our routes will work. And if you've set things up correctly, then shouldn't have any issues. If we go back into our Proxmox instance, we'll see if we can actually ping our remote server. So it was 192.168.86.45. And just like that, we can ping it, meaning we can access it. And even still, here it is, the TrueNAS dashboard. This is the one that is remote. It is not in my house. And we can still access it as if we were sitting directly in front of it. Last step, I know I said that before, but actual last step is setting up rsync. Now there are other ways you can go about moving data from one place to another. You can do replication through ZFS. You can do sync thing, which I personally use as well, but we are going with rsync. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is set up the module on your host device. Now our host device is Proxmox, a container running in Proxmox actually. So let's go in there and take a look at what we've done. Now we're actually gonna run rsync on the base Proxmox operating system. Now I know we have Docker running in a container, but we're gonna run rsync on the host. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is actually create an rsync configuration file. You may have one already created for you automatically, but you may not. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and create one. The rsync file is going to be in the Etsy directory. So go ahead and CD to Etsy. And then you're going to run nano or vim or whatever text editor you use and rsync d.conf. Once you do that, It'll either bring up your file or create one for you. I had to create one myself and you can see there's not much to it because we are running a very simple configuration. What you're gonna to wanna to do is in the brackets up here, give your module a name. This can be whatever you want. Mine is called main ZFS. Then you wanna specify the path that you want to access. So this is our main server that we wanna pull from and all of our data is located in this mount directory main ZFS and you can give it a comment. So if you get Alzheimer's, you don't forget what it is. So yeah, it's extremely simple, I know. So let's get out of here and I'll just show you guys if we look at what's in that directory, you'll see that is all of my data. I have PhotoPrism, I have SyncThing data and I have backups for all my VMs as well as Proxmox backs up. backs ups? backups. So yeah, after that, go ahead and restart rsync. System CTL, restart our sync. And just like that, restarted, picked up our configuration. And the final and absolute last step is to configure our sync on your remote server. So luckily in TrueNAS, it's extremely easy. Go into data protection and go into our sync tasks. Here you can see I've already created one and let's take a look at it. And here's where you can specify how you want our sync to act. First thing is a source where you want the data to be stored on your backup system. So you're saying, I wanna pull from my main system and I wanna store it somewhere on my backup system. So here I've given it a location of Mount Beans Backup. Don't ask why. Specify the user you want the rsync task to run as. Direction, is this gonna be a pull or a push? So we have it in a pull configuration, meaning that the remote directory is going to pull data from our main system 
on our local network. Give it a description, give it a schedule, how often you want it to run. Remote host, this is going to be the IP address of the server you want to pull from. In my instance, it's on my local network, which is in the subnet 10.0.0.1. And the IP address for my server is 10.0.0.43. We want to use the module name for our sync. You can either do that or SSH. I found that module works better. And then give it that module name that we specified using the configuration on our backup server or on our main server. And then there's a couple of attributes here. I'm not going to go over what all of them does. You can kind of hover over and it gives you a brief description, but I've left compress on just so that we can get the most out of our rsync command because this is over the network. This is over the actual WAN network, so we're gonna want as much help as we can get. And then save it, and you can let it go, or you can just run it. Bada bing, bada boom. Our rsync task is running, and it will take uh, a little bit. Well, it's been a few days for two reasons. One being that my camera actually died when I was filming the conclusion to this video, so I lost pretty much all the footage from that. Bummer but it was kind of a blessing in disguise because I then realized that the way we had it set up wasn't actually working the way I thought it was. Let me explain. So remember when I said we'd be deploying our remote server and using a pull configuration, meaning that it essentially phone home and pull the data back that it needs? Well, it didn't really work when we deployed TailScale using the TrueCharts repository. I don't know if this is a Kubernetes thing or a TrueCharts thing, but essentially when I had it set up, the TrueNAS scale server couldn't phone back home. Now, I could go through the TailScale network from directly inside the Kubernetes cluster, but the TrueNAS server network actually sits outside the Kubernetes cluster, so unless you are really good with Kubernetes networking, uh, it was a pain and I couldn't figure it out. So it just didn't work in the way I had it set up. But if you're running TrueNAS on your home server and you wanted to push the data to your remote server, it works perfectly fine. I can ping from my home network to the remote server, just not backwards. So what did we do? Well, TrueNAS scale is based on Debian and has Docker installed by default. So all I did was spin up the Docker container for TailScale directly on the host system and after a couple of commands, my tail scale was running directly on the TrueNAST host network. TrueNAST? TrueNAST. TrueNAST host network. And from there, I can now ping from the remote server back home and vice versa. And then when I went into rsync and tried to do a pull, everything worked perfectly fine. So yeah, this didn't really turn out as I anticipated, but I definitely learned a couple of things. So, but if you wanted to go like what I initially did, you could use a push configuration, everything would be perfectly fine. If you have a setup like mine and you want to use a pull configuration, I didn't have much luck with the true charts and tail scale setup, but I did just set it up through Docker on the host system and it was pretty easy. So you could do that if you want, but yeah, it works. Am I happy with it? Kind of. I mean, it works. I wish it was uh, a little bit sexier, but you know, as long as it works, then oh well. But yeah, I'll have much better documentation for this on my website, link in the description below, but yeah, that is going to be it. Let me know down in the comments what backup solutions you guys use, and hopefully it's more elegant than, than mine. But uh, yeah, I'd be interested to know what you guys use. So sound off down in the comments, but that is it. I hope you liked this video. If you did, drop a like. If you like content like this or just looking at my face, then please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a ton. But I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreons and my YouTube members. You guys are my remote support system that can easily be accessible through the tail scale network, uh, no matter how you deploy it. So you guys are awesome. That is it. If you are still around, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you in the next one.